Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I've always told out of voice radio. So today, we are kicking it old school, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at a very old deck, one of the greatest Pokemon trading card game decks we have ever had. And no, that is not an exaggeration. It's Gardevoir Gallade, not the recent Gardevoir Gallade. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen. We're kicking it old school. We are talking about 2008 Gardevoir Gallade, and more specifically, the deck with which Jason Klesinski won the World Championships. And it shouldn't surprise you to hear that it revolved around, wait for it, Gardevoir and Gallade. Now, Gardevoir actually was great on both counts. The attack was spectacular. Psychic and two colorless energy. We didn't have double colorless back then, but we had other tricks. 60 damage during your opponent's next turn. They cannot use any poker powers. And this was in a format where people really relied on stuff like Claydol to get going. This was big. Your own poker power allowed you to search your opponent's discard pile for a supporter card and then use it. It gave you a second supporter every turn, essentially. It gave you consistency like nobody's business. Now, there was a God of War level X. You, when God of War was in the active, you could level X. You then kept everything that was on God of War, but you upped your HP and gained more stuff. And the God of War level X here was pretty good. As a quick side note, it did have the same name as God of War. So if you played one of the level X as Jason did, you had to give up one of the regular and only play free. The poker power basically allowed you to switch God of War either into or out of the active. Nice. And the attack for two psychic energy, choose one Pokemon with the fewest remaining HP and knock it out. I.e., you knock out the lowest HP Pokemon on the field. Hopefully it's your opponents. Then you bring in Gallade, and Gallade, with a remember of Awesome Curly, are the same as Gardevoir does, had two really good attacks. For two energy, put damage counters on the defending Pokemon until it is 50 HP away from being knocked out, and then your opponent switches their active Pokemon. Here's the thing, though. Remember what I just said about Gardevoir Level X's attack? In theory, you use Sonic Blade to put their active down to 50 HP, It's now got the lowest HP remaining on the field, so that means you can just knock it straight out using Gardevoir level X, and hopefully when it switches to the bench, your opponent has to put up something awkward, and then they have to stop for a turn or two, because they're stuck in the active. Very nice. But Gallade's second attack here was actually even better. For free energy... You did 60 damage, but you could flip up as many prize cards as you like, up to 6 of course, and then do an extra 20 damage. If you did all 6, you'd be doing 180 damage. And back then, ladies and gentlemen, 180 damage was absolutely ludicrous. Bearing in mind, God of War Level X was a further evolved stage 2, and it had 130. Doing 180 was frankly utterly ridiculous. Now, there were some Pokemon played here for consistency, the main one being Claydol. Claydol was everywhere back then. Put one or two cards on the bottom of your deck and then draw until you got six in your hand. It was crazy. Although we also did play Chatop that had free retreat, which was great. And for zero energy, you could use Mimic to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw the same number of cards that your opponent had. This made it a very consistent deck, which is good, because he played a 1-1 Dusk Noir line. One Dusk Girl, one Dusk Noir, no Dusk Lops. You could do that back then, ladies and gentlemen. And this Dusk Noir was played for the ability. Dark Palm. Once during your turn, before you attack, if your opponent has four or more bench Pokemon, you can choose one and your opponent shuffles it into their deck. How cool is that? And of course, don't forget, Gallade's attack forced your opponent to switch to the bench, which was really cool with Dusk Noir. Because now they've got a Pokemon they want in the active on their bench, and Dusk Noir can make them shuffle it back into their deck. Weird that people played a 101 tech line, but back then you just could. The other Pokemon Jason played were very much just tech cards. He played a Jirachi EX, and this was a great little card. Because... 
for a psychic and a colorless energy, you did 30 damage and your opponent couldn't use any poker powers. But if your opponent had either an EX or a stage 2 in play, most people did, back then, ladies and gentlemen, you could rare candy into a stage 2 on the first turn of the game. You could literally go first and just go routes, rare candy, Gardevoir straight away. Then you don't pay the colorless, so you just for one psychic energy on a basic, stop your opponent using poker powers. And given that that's what you really want to do in this deck, it just gave you a faster route to doing so. And finally, Jolteon Star was played. Now, Jolteon Star, stars were kind of fun because you could only play one Pokemon Star of any description in your deck. But what it did for free energy... You did 40 damage and got a bit of immunity if you could flip a heads. But more importantly, when you played Jolteon Star down, you just put one damage counter on each active Pokemon, yours and your opponent's. That's it. But oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, did it make the maths work out. We're going to talk about that more when we get to Lake Boundary. Now, before we go any further, we need to talk about the special energy cards that this deck had. Because a lot of these attack costs look quite awkward, but actually, we had double rainbow energy, and we had scramble energy. Double rainbow could only be attached to an evolve non-EX Pokemon, not a basic, not an EX. And it gave you any two energy, like two rainbow energy, but it meant that any damage you did was reduced by 10. So it didn't do damage to you, but it made you do less damage. Scramble energy was even more ridiculous. It again could only be attached to an evolved non-EX, not basic non-EX. And you had to be behind on prizes or else it was just one colorless energy. But if you were behind on prizes, it gave you free energy of any description. Which made Jirachi EX even better. Because you've got a 90 HP Pokemon, it means that you get the lock going turn one. Your opponent KOs Jirachi EX, and then you go, ha, now I've got access to Scramble Energy and you don't, so I can just put a Scramble Energy on my Gardevoir and it's paying all three of my attack cost without having to play Double Rainbow, which would reduce the amount of damage I was doing by 10, which would suck. He also played Cool Energy, which was quite popular at the time. You play four so that you started with it. Colorless Energy, attach it to your Pokemon, and you get to search for two basics, put them on your bench, and it ends your turn. It was cool. Everybody played it. Cyclone Energy basically acted as a repel. It forced your opponent to switch their active when you attached it to your active Pokemon. And obviously, he played Psychic Energy. It was a Psychic deck. So going through the rest of the supporters, etc. Roseanne's research was great. It allowed you to search for any two in combination of basic Pokemon and basic energy. Really helped with consistency and getting going. Celio's network just allowed you to search for any non-EX Pokemon and put it into your hand. But of course, you didn't really play any EXs other than your single copy of Jirachi. So this worked quite nicely here as a card. Although if you did want to grab that, you could use BB Search. BB Search meant you put a card from your hand into your deck and search for any Pokemon. What was really cool, of course, was everyone was playing Claydol. So BB Search would allow you to shuffle a random card from your hand you didn't want into your deck, meaning you draw an extra card with Claydol when you played the Pokemon for which you searched. Which was quite nice. Steven's advice meant that you could draw one card for every one of your opponent's Pokemon in play, as long as you had seven or fewer cards in hand. And of course, when you combine it with stuff like Claydol, it was just crazy. These decks back in 2008, they set up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Team Galactic's Wager, that was a weird one. You played rock, paper, scissors with your opponent. The winner got six cards in their hand because you both shuffled up. The loser got three. And don't forget, the whole point of this deck is to use Gardevoir to lock them out of poker powers so there will be no Claydol, etc. to get those cards back. Yet yeah, entire games were decided because someone lost Team Galactic's Wager and then just got locked out of the game by Gardevoir. Cruel! But what can you do? Now, an unusual card that Jason played that not everybody played in this deck was Lake Boundary. Lake Boundary gave double weakness, i.e. everyone had two times weakness. Now, at the time, if you look at cards like Gardevoir, 
They didn't have two times weakness. Gardevoir's weakness was plus 30. So it would take 30 more damage from a psychic Pokemon. Lake Boundary made all the difference. It meant that Gardevoir would hit an opposing Gardevoir for 120. Well, that's good, because you get a KO. Now, here's the thing. A lot of the time, Gardevoir would be using double rainbow, so you'd only actually be hitting for 100. You wouldn't quite get the KO on an opposing Gardevoir. If you were using Scramble, you would, but if you were playing double rainbow, you wouldn't. Oh, wait. That's where Jolteon Star comes in, doing that last 10 damage for the KO. Similarly, against a Gallade, you would then be doing 120 with your Gardevoir. Oh no, wait, Gardevoir's got 130, assuming you're not playing double rainbow, of course. You're doing 120, ah, you're 10 damage short. That's where Jolteon Star comes in. So I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, Jolteon Star put in work in this particular deck. Lake Boundary worked, ladies and gentlemen. And then just to finish off, for Rare Candy, Rare Candy lets you go from a basic to a stage 2, except as previously mentioned, you did not have to wait a turn to use it back then, which made it super OP. We had Warp Point, which was basically just a skate rope. It was a switch that made your opponent switch. It's great. And Windstorm was basically Field Blower, by which I mean it was exactly Field Blower. But the key was here that a very, very popular tool was Cessation Crystal. If it was attached to a non-EX that was active, neither player could use Poker Powers or Poker Bodies. And as you've already seen from this deck between Gardevoir and Claydol and Jolteon, this was a deck that really wanted to use poker powers, Cessation Crystal was a real pain, Windstorm got rid of it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the best deck in the world in 2008. Jason Klesinski took it all the way to the World Championship Finals, but when I say this deck was dominating for a while, I mean it dominated the format like almost no deck has in the past 10 years it was everywhere to the point that you played it you counted it or you cried but as with all videos like this i need to hear from you guys were you playing back then let me know ladies and gentlemen what you thought about this deck did you play it did you play against it share some memories if you didn't play back then Tell me what you think about this deck, hearing about it for the first time. Either way, stick a comment down below. Go nuts! Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc., you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.